Have you ever wondered how a tiny habit can lead to a remarkable transformation in your life? Today, we're diving into the concept of Atomic Habits, a game-changing idea from the bestseller book Atomic Habits by James Clear. In essence, Atomic Habits are small, consistent changes that, when stacked up over time, can lead to significant results. Imagine a snowball rolling down a hill. It starts small, but as it continues, it picks up more and more snow, growing in size until it's a force to be reckoned with. That's exactly how atomic habits work. They may seem insignificant at first, but their power lies in their consistency and compounding effect. Let's take an example from the book. Clear introduces us to the British cycling team, which was notorious for its poor performance. That was until their coach introduced the concept of marginal gains, similar to atomic habits. He believed that by improving every facet of cycling by just 1%, they could achieve remarkable results. And indeed, they did. From redesigning the bike seats for more comfort to washing their hands to avoid illness and thus missing training days. These small changes led to an astounding turnaround. In just five years, the team won 60% of the gold medals in the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing. But how does this apply to our lives? Well, let's say you want to read more. Instead of setting a daunting goal of a book per week, start by reading just one page a day. It's a small commitment, but over time you'll find yourself reading more and more. Before you know it, you're not just a person who reads, you're a reader. So, the next time you're feeling overwhelmed by a big goal, remember the power of atomic habits. Start small, be consistent, and watch as these tiny changes snowball into remarkable transformations. Remember, every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. Now let's delve into the topic of life's purpose. Do you know why you're here and what you're meant to do? Imagine a compass, it always points north. It has a purpose, a direction. But what about us humans? Do we have a compass? Well, the answer is yes. It's not a physical one, of course, but a metaphorical one. It's called our purpose, our raison d'etre. The importance of finding one's purpose in life cannot be overstated. It's like finding the North Star that guides us through the uncharted territories of life. It's the beacon that lights up our path in the darkest nights. It's the anchor that keeps us steady in the stormiest seas. Let's reference a bestseller book that explores this concept beautifully, The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. The book tells the story of a young shepherd named Santiago who embarks on a journey in search of a treasure. Along the way, Santiago learns that the real treasure is not the material wealth he initially sought, but the wisdom and self-discovery he gains through his journey. Just like Santiago, each one of us is on a journey to discover our purpose. It's not always easy, and it doesn't always make sense. Sometimes it's confusing, frustrating, and even scary. But it's also exciting, fulfilling, and deeply satisfying. Understanding one's purpose is like unlocking the secret code to life. It brings clarity to our actions, meaning to our existence, and fulfillment to our souls. It makes us see life not as a series of random events, but as a beautifully orchestrated symphony. So how do we find our purpose? Well, there's no one-size-fits-all answer to this question. It's a personal journey that requires introspection, self-discovery, and courage. It's about listening to your heart, following your intuition, and daring to dream big. Remember, finding your purpose is not a destination, but a journey. It's not about reaching a specific point, but about growing, evolving, and transforming along the way. In the end, it's not about the destination, but the journey you embark on to discover your purpose. Are you feeling stuck in your career and unsure of how to make progress? Career development is not a destination, but rather a journey. It's about navigating through the evolving landscape of work, learning new skills, and adapting to change. Let's delve into some strategies that can help you on this journey. Take a leaf out of Cal Newport's book, So Good They Can't Ignore You. Newport argues that following your passion might not be the best advice. Instead, he suggests focusing on becoming so skilled in your field that you become indispensable. So how do you become so good they can't ignore you? It begins with a mindset shift. Rather than hunting for the perfect job that matches your passions, Look at your current role and ask yourself, what skills can I develop here? What value can I bring to this position? It's about a concept known as career capital. This is the unique set of skills that you acquire through hard work and deliberate practice. As you accumulate career capital, you gain leverage. This leverage can be used to shape your job in ways that resonate with what you value most in your work. 
But let's not forget about passion entirely. Passion often comes after you've put in the hard work to become excellent at something valuable, not before. In the pursuit of becoming so good they can't ignore you, you might just find your passion. Another crucial element in career development is the ability to adapt. The world of work is constantly changing. New industries emerge, old ones fade, and job roles evolve. Being adaptable means being open to new ideas, willing to learn new skills, and ready to take on new challenges. This journey of career development isn't always easy. It requires patience, persistence, and resilience. But remember, the most fulfilling careers are often built over time, not overnight. So keep honing your skills, stay adaptable, and remember that your passion often grows with your competence. Remember, becoming a master in your field takes time and patience, but the rewards are worth the effort. Have you ever wondered how to increase your wealth and achieve financial freedom? Well, you're not alone. Millions around the globe are on this quest, and the path to it might be simpler than you think. In Robert Kiyosaki's bestseller, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a cornerstone of financial education, he propounds the importance of investing and building assets. But what does that mean? Let's break it down. Investing is the act of putting your money to work. It's not about quick returns or overnight success. It's about consistency and patience. It's about understanding that the money you invest today, whether in stocks, real estate, or a small business, is expected to produce more money in the future. It's about making your money work for you, not the other way around. Building assets, on the other hand, is about creating sources of income apart from your regular job. An asset could be a rental property, a blog that earns ad revenue, or a side business. The key is to cultivate multiple streams of income so that you're not solely reliant on your paycheck. This diversification can provide a safety net and open up new opportunities for wealth accumulation. Financial education is the bedrock on which these two principles stand. It's about understanding the difference between an asset and a liability, knowing how to manage risk, and learning to make informed decisions. It's about equipping yourself with the knowledge to navigate the financial world with confidence and clarity. So, how can we start this journey towards financial growth? Start small. Invest in your financial education. Read books, take courses, listen to podcasts, then take action. Start investing, even if it's a small amount. Create an asset, even if it's a tiny one. Remember, it's not about the size of your start, but the direction of your progress. Financial growth isn't just about making money. It's about creating a system that allows you to live the life you want. It's about freedom, flexibility, and the ability to make choices that align with your values and aspirations. Remember, every financial decision you make is a stepping stone towards the life you envision. How often do you take time to care for your physical and mental health? This question is not meant to induce guilt, but to inspire a shift in perspective. Health is not merely the absence of disease, it's a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. An excellent resource that emphasizes this holistic perspective is the best-selling book, The Power of Now, by Eckhart Tolle. Tolle's work underscores the transformative power of living in the present moment and how it can significantly improve our mental well-being. This is the essence of mindfulness, being fully engaged with what we're doing, not overthinking, obsessing, or fretting about the past or future. Mindfulness doesn't mean we need to sit in a lotus position and hum. It can be practiced anywhere, anytime. While brushing your teeth, focus on the taste of the toothpaste, the sensation of the brush on your gums. While eating, savor every bite, appreciating the texture and flavor. It's about engaging fully with the task at hand, not letting our minds wander into yesterday's troubles or tomorrow's anxieties. Self-care, on the other hand, is about taking small, intentional actions to care for our physical health. It's about nourishing your body with balanced meals, staying hydrated, getting enough sleep, and incorporating physical activity into your daily routine. It's not about setting unrealistic goals or punishing your body with extreme diets and rigorous workouts. It's about treating your body with kindness and respect, recognizing it as the incredible machine that it is, one that needs regular maintenance to function optimally. But remember, the path to health and well-being is not a sprint, but a marathon. It's a lifelong journey, filled with ups and downs, successes, and setbacks. So be patient with yourself, celebrate your victories, however small they may be, and learn from your setbacks. In the words of the great philosopher Lao Tzu, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So take that step today, no matter how small, because your health is your wealth. 
Remember to take care of yourself, both physically and mentally. 